Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is day 19 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Vita stands for Vlog Every Day in April, and today's band is Primus. I saw Primus for the first time with the Jerry Was a Race Car Driver video. Up until then, all I knew about Primus is that my friends lumped them in with the growing funk metal movement of the early 90s. I kind of understood where they got the idea. The music was very groove oriented and the bass player was doing all kinds of slapping and popping. But this was way different. Most of those bands were either in the process of inventing rap metal or ripping off the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Primus added a ton of depth to their sound and seemed to exist as a separate entity all by themselves. Sailing the seas of cheese is part of my musical DNA. I find myself stealing drum riffs all the time from this band and it makes the list of play along albums where I would put on headphones and attempt to play the songs on my drums. The bass is what is most unusual about this band. It is not the funk slap stuff like Flea does, but it is definitely a lead instrument. He uses a tapping technique which most people know as something popularized by Eddie Van Halen. But instead of using it as a solo device, he creates sequences of notes that act like organic loops. Many electronic songs have sequenced parts that give the feel of predictable but rambling series of notes. Their purpose is to give the song a sense of flow over a solid beat. Les Claypool composes the same type of sequence but he plays it with his fingers, giving it a more organic and less mechanical feel. This lesson has carried over into the way I sample my own loops, preferring to play them live rather than program them. Those little variances make all the difference in the world and are the central ingredient to the organic feel. His overall style is a collage of many different techniques which most players only do one at a time. He switches seamlessly from rhythm to solo riffs as if it were the most natural thing in the world. And he's singing over it, which is really, really hard. Speaking of singing, his vocals are often the thing that turn people off the most, but I like him for the same reason. The guitars are mostly texture and solo which gives color and depth to the bass riffs. The drums continue in the prog rock lineage with lots of odd time signatures and multiple textures. It is partially accurate to compare them to Rush in that they are a trio made up of three soloists. One of their biggest strengths, in addition to being amazing musicians, is that they know how to stay out of each other's way. Sometimes that's a lot harder than playing a million notes. I would argue that Seas of Cheese can be considered a concept album because it has little connecting parts that aren't songs. If you're looking for a central theme, then consider the Les Claypool universe to be an all-encompassing concept. It's inhabited by all kinds of strange characters that sound like people in real life, mostly because the person singing the lyrics is just as interesting as the subjects of his songs. The standout tracks for me on this album are Sergeant Baker, Jerry was a race car driver, and Tommy the Cat. I proceeded to buy both albums immediately afterwards. Suck On This is a live album which features many of the songs off the next two albums, and one that makes it onto the third. The Heckler and Jalike It are the only tracks that don't get repeated later on. This live album documents the fact that Primus was already a great band that would be able to make an amazing album as soon as they got the money to do so. That next album is Frizzle Fry, and the standards from Suck On This get the studio treatment. The standout tracks on this album for me are Too Many Puppies, with its stabbing twin bells, and the staggered looping drum beat of Spaghetti Western. I also picked up the EP Miscellaneous Debris, which is a collection of covers. There are a couple of songs which show off their darker side, like Intruder and Sinister Exaggerator. My favorite track is Tippy Toes. The dark tone continues on the next album, Pork Soda. After the mandolin solo, we start off with a song about a homeless man killing his friend and a song about one of their friends that hung himself. Even the goofy songs seem to have a dark feel. I'm listening to the album as I write this part and I realize that the production of the album adds to the dark tone. I wonder if that was intentional. DMV is the goofy single, but I love Old Diamondback Sturgeon the most. Tales from the Punchbowl is next and it seems to be a mixture of the sounds from the two previous albums. There are upbeat goofy songs mixed with some dark ones. Mrs. Blaylene particularly resonated with me. There were many times I was made to feel two feet small at the hands of a critical teacher. Winona's Big Brown Beaver occupies the goofy hit single spot. 
I'd have to say that my other favorites are Southbound Pachyderm, Over the Electric Grapevine, and De Anza Jig. I don't know why I lost track of Primus after that. It seems that I consumed things in cycles. But you can still count Primus as one of my main influences. Lastly, I would like to mention someone within the Primus organization that has always been very important to me. Tim Saulian has worked for Primus over the years and has let me take small glimpses into their world. He also holds the distinction of being one of the most influential drummers on this list. You will see him when I get to Victim's Family later on down the list. What does Primus mean to you? I'd like to hear your thoughts and observations in the comments below. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, and shared. Thanks for checking out Day 19 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Tomorrow's band? Radiohead. I'm Rockula, and this is Rockula Retrospective.